Good evening, everyone. Hi. Uh, welcome. Uh, my name is Jorge Molina. I'm one of the programmers here at NewFest, and I want to welcome you to the 35th annual New York LGBTQ Plus Film Festival and our New York premiere of National Anthem. Here we're very pleased to safely connect with audiences and filmmakers live in venues both in Manhattan and Brooklyn, and once again provide access to watch over 120 films in our uh, virtual streaming platform nationwide. Uh, we encourage you all to become a New Fest member today at newfest.org to receive exclusive benefits of the festival and enjoy discounts not just for here, but our amazing year-round programming and events, both virtual and in person. Uh, one of the ways you can do that you, is you can enter the New Fest 2023 raffle, and for just $10, you have a chance to win, to win a once-in-a-lifetime cruise on the Norwegian coast. Uh, you can do that at newfest.org or in the uh, lobby right after the movie. Uh, please also consider helping us celebrate this milestone anniversary by making a donation to our 35th anniversary fundraising campaign. This will make sure that we can continue providing a platform for queer stories and storytellers for uh, more uh, 35 years more. Uh, we'd like to thank our many generous sponsors, including Warner Brothers Discovery, Gilead, Grey Goose, and J.P. Morgan Chase. And a very special thank you to the board, staff, and especially our tireless volunteers for their commitment to NewFest. So please a round of applause for all of them. <laughs> for all the brilliant work uh, we're celebrating at the festival. Uh, and now to the matter at hand, uh, the New York premiere of National Anthem. Um, after I watched this movie for the first time, I, I just knew we had to have it on the festival and that it was going to be not just one of my favorite films here at the festival, but probably of the year. Um, in his feature film debut, director Luke Guilford take his, his, takes his artistic eye and sensibility that made him a sensation in photography and is able to translate it into a story filled not only with gorgeous visuals, I seriously cannot wait for you to see some of these images on a big screen, uh, but also of human empathy and emotion. National Anthem takes a setting and a genre that has been historically and culturally full of conservative masculinity, strict tradition, and emotional repression, and turns it into a place of unbridled liberation, community, and queer joy. Uh, it is unlike anything I have seen before, and I'm very excited to get to share it with you. I'm also very excited uh, that the director is here to give a few opening remarks, so please help me in welcoming Luke Gilford. <laughs> Hey everyone, wow, it's so cool to be at New Fest in New York City. It's definitely a dream come true. I love this festival, I love New York, and it's so, such a dream come true to be able to share it with you all here. Um, National Anthem is really a Western for the new world, and it started, as a lot of you know, as a very personal photography project, um, and then has kind of transformed mm -hmm. into uh, this feature film. So it's it started as something very personal to me, and then as we grew it, you know, collaborating with so many people from our actors to cinematographer, production design, our producers, it became so much less about me and about all of us and how we all connected to the story. So I really hope that all of you can see yourselves reflected back in one way or another. And we will be here, Charlie and I, for a Q&A afterwards, so please stick around and hope to see you there. Yes, it looks like there will be a Q&A after. Also, this movie is eligible for the Audience Award, so make sure to scan the QR code after the movie or right at the screen or at the lobby uh, to make sure your vote counts. See you after the screening. Thank you, everyone. Congratulations. Um, I said it before, but I, I adore this movie and in a big screen, I, it's an even more overwhelming, mind-blowing experience. Um, you, you mentioned in the intro that this came from your photography book and your photography project. Um, tell me a little bit about how, what was the moment that you decided to expand that into something narrative? Like, was there, like what inspired that jump, what made you decide to, to, to go that route? Um, well, it was a, 
process. It wasn't like a, a specific moment, but making the book took years. I started it um, in 2016, and um, I was actually living in New York at the time, and I just uh, had kind of discovered this community by chance and um, was so inspired going uh, to the rodeos. And there were so many folks that I met that um, there was so much resilience and beauty and joy and um, it felt like there were so many stories to, to hear and um, I started writing it down as I was working on the book and it felt like it just really lended itself more to uh, also creating a film to kind of open it up more and to share it with more people um, because yeah I think that on screen we've seen so much kind of tragedy for queer stories and it really felt like I wanted more people to see that this was out there and that it was real and that it was possible to live this way. I, I like that. I love that it was like a process, simultaneous. How, how did you decide on the POV character? How did you decide, okay, this is our way in and this is how I want to introduce this world to people that may not be familiar that it, it's there? Um, I think for my first feature, I just really wanted to start from a personal place and for uh, Dylan's perspective to, you know, kind of reflect my own. Mm -hmm. So being someone who's an outsider who's coming in um, and there's a lot of myself and Dylan. I mean, my first love was a trans woman mm -hmm. and there's, yeah, there's just a lot that I wanted to, as a first film, to kind of debut uh, come out from a very intimate um, place. Yeah, and, and definitely, uh, Charlie, uh, how how and when did you hear about this? How did you get involved? Did you know anything about this world at all, or was this kind of like a journey for you, like similar to the character? Uh, I mean, uh, very much, but also I, I did know of Luke because we worked together when I was 18, I think. We did a photo shoot together. And so I was very aware of his work as a photographer. And so when I got the script and found out that he was writing and was going to direct this, it was so exciting. And I read the script and then we spoke on the phone for probably three hours or four hours or something and really just poured our hearts into each other. And that was really when I knew like, this isn't even up to me anymore. Like this is very much something that needs to happen. And fortunately, because it was Luke's story and something that was so personal to him, I felt so taken care of and safe through that process. And that was really the beginning, the first phone call we had and then carried through. I mean, we went to my first queer rodeo in Arizona, I think maybe a month or two later. And that was such a special experience where most of the people there didn't know we were filming. And so they just saw me as the character, which was lovely and embraced me as such. And it was really such a profound experience. I think that, I mean, I remember feeling like, oh my God, I'm so ready to just keep going. And we had to stop for a little bit before we started again. But it was a wonderful beginning to that world and, and a reflection to, of course, to this journey. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, uh, tell me a little bit about the shooting uh, the process. Uh, was it all done on location? Was it like how how immersed were you all as a cast and crew with with these communities? And how how was it uh, both if there was a prep process and like just being there with with the people? Um, it was so important to me to. Uh, work with a lot of the people from the actual crew rodeo and to, so um, like Charlie was saying we actually you know went to a couple of different rodeos and shot there and a lot of the people that were in the book are also in the film um, there's also some friends who are here that are in the Fernando's here <laughs> yes <laughs> Fernando's <laughs> the house of Splendor um, family um, and yeah it was just such a special experience to bring in uh, friends to kind of be part of it and to sort of blend these worlds together and um, I actually lived on a queer farm in Tennessee after I uh, graduated from college and so some of those experiences kind of went into House of Splendor and then the rodeo world it was sort of trying to uh, blend different worlds mm -hmm. together and bring friends and chosen family uh, coming all to New Mexico to um, be part of this film and yeah so we shot it all the Principal photography was all in New Mexico, okay. um, but we also shot at rodeos because it was so important to me not to 
fake a rodeo yeah. for it to really be there. So we had to go kind of on the rodeo calendar. Some folks <laughs> from IGR are here. Michael is here, yes, he's from IGR. Um, and he was immensely helpful for us. Um, are Mickey and Pete here too? Amazing! You and Peter are our producers. They um, really believed in the project from the very beginning and helped bring it to life. They, you know, came to that first rodeo with us, and um, Michael helped really welcome us and was sort of a translator for us um, and Mickey and Pete and all of us to kind of be part of this world and to make sure that everyone there was comfortable and um, that you know if they didn't want to be part of it because still we're in rural <laughs> areas there are folks that you know maybe don't want to be on camera and you know there was a lot that we needed to think through and make sure that we were doing it with care and respect and um, so Michael was really so important in that process. Uh, how about for you how was the shooting process how was being with these people in these places in this community uh, both of you and like with the rest of the cast. It was incredibly special. Um, I mean, again, going back to that first rodeo, it was just infectious. I mean, the only feeling I could come up with out of it was we need to just keep going. That was really it. And it was good. He got on a bull the very first day of shooting. <laughs> <laughs> he was ready to go. <laughs> but we shot it entirely in 17 days, so that was wow. pretty insane. I've never shot anything that quickly, and we were also shooting on film, so of course that adds another layer to it. So. Is Kate or is Mendy here? Yes, Kate <laughs> shot the film. Beautifully. Yes. <laughs> she, I mean, yeah, it was such an incredible process collaborating with her, and to do this within 17 days was really, um, for those of you who've made things, I'm sure you know that's insanely fast. <laughs> um, and so yeah, to, it really says so much about Charlie too, that he we had to be so kind of dialed in with performance um, to accomplish that. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. <laughs> no, no, please. I mean, I felt like it also spoke to how well in terms of the people that were brought in from the very beginning it just felt like luke and our producers really curated the best group of people imaginable really you know everyone that was on set really felt connected and invested in the story i mean you can't make something like this in 17 days without that of course but i i really love getting to watch the film and just appreciate that continually because i think that is something that will hopefully very much live on as it goes so, so it sounds that it obviously was a very quick shoot, but a project that took a lot of time and love to to get to where it was. Was there a challenge both in the uh, envisioning creation of it and in the finding the character? Uh, was there a challenge that seemed like a big obstacle at the time, but when looking back led you to a discovery or a moment or something that looking back like, oh, I'm glad there was that obstacle because it led us to something unexpectedly that helped us? Um, the first thing that comes to mind is that no one told us that in New Mexico when we were shooting it was the windy season <laughs> until we got there and our boom operator was literally flying away like Mary Poppins. <laughs> Uh, so that, but then now watching it, even though we've had to do so much ADR, thank God Charlie's so good with ADR, so it really feels natural, I think, but I, I was so paranoid it was going to seem like a, like a Korean film with the, <laughs> um, but yeah, we, the, you know, the audio was really messed up, and, uh, and, but now looking at it, I actually love that the wind is like a character in the movie, yeah. and it brings so much drama. I think that's something you're speaking of, uh, specifically when Carrie and I go for the walk. That was something that literally, as we're shooting it, I'm going, we're going to reshoot this. There's no way. The wig kept flying The wig kept flying up. You couldn't hear anything we were saying. But it did lend to your point in this really lovely way, because Mason and I, I think, embraced that almost like freedom. And I think mm -hmm. you hopefully feel that a little bit in the scene, because it is kind of the first breath after this incredible experience that 
push for Dylan he's getting to have but the two of them a really profound moment in their bond and so it was nice that it snuck up on us in a way that you know wasn't like manipulated or forced or anything like that in fact like we really thought we were going to do it again so, yeah, yeah. That, I, they really were like we're definitely reshooting this and we're like no we're not <laughs> <laughs> um, but also it was really fun for um, Mason who's so brilliant who played Carrie to improv too where she's just like oh this wind is so transphobic. <laughs> uh, well, congratulations again for for making this. It's it's truly such a uh, an accomplishment. Uh, thank you all for coming. Uh, Wait, are we are we able to? to uh, I thought they were going to ask. Some we questions. unfortunately can we do that, but we are able to gather uh, out and if they want to ask any okay, questions. Okay, perfect. But, yeah, yeah. I'll stick around if you have any questions. Yes.